NNF After Dark is brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. For all of your vacation planning needs, visit www.sandpipervacations.com. Tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Welcome to NNF After Dark. Chris is going to take you through the highlights of the previous episode and maybe even say some bad words, plus celebrity interviews, and much, much more. And now, here he is, the scumbag reselling hoarder himself, Chris Yob! Welcome to No New Friends After Dark. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful, spacious, very spacious Sandpiper Vacation Studio. I got a lot of space in here, Scott. I don't know about you. I got a lot of space. And that's hard for me that's, at this weight. It's because you're a little person. It's a li- so, oh, yeah. I know. It's been tough for me lately. Very spacious. Yeah, now we're going to have to pick the joke. We have to pick the joke. Is it, are you a little person? I know. Or are you a big person? I know. Well, either way, I'm depressed. So, like I said, the No New Friends After Dark, we are pulling back the curtain of life. And our prior episode at the same damn time, we're changing the world one episode at a time. At least that's what I tell myself. Like I said, this is No New Friends After Dark. Or should I say, No New Friends After Shark. (laughs) That's because tonight we're talking a little bit about Under the Sea. Under the Sea. Scott, it I have is no better. idea Delaware where you were going. Is wetter. Take it from me. Um, Little Mermaid. This is the No New Friends musical episode. It, apparently, I, I wished it was. I'm, I'm begging sing? Scott for me. Let's sing everything. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. All right, you ready? For, you ready? <laughs> Do we have the license to all this? <laughs> under the sea, under the sea, darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Ask Nick from Sandpaper Vacations. <laughs> Oh, oh man, I've been oh saving that. I've been saving that. So, oh my uh, we're talking about the Little Mermaid today, and not the um, whitewashed one from the '90s. We're talking about the new inclusive one from 2023. I do have a lot of issues with this, and I know Scott does as well. But we're nervous to talk about it, <laughs> and I think we touched on this a little bit in our prior episode that. Uh, a lot of problems with the new Little Mermaid. Nothing having to do with the color of Ariel's skin. Nothing. That's probably like the role, the 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 actress that they chose to to play Ariel is probably the best part of of the new movie. Um, the rest of it har- is horrible. But <laughs> this episode or this segment or however long it takes us, I want to talk a little bit about the um act, the impact that this is having, both positive and unfortunately negative. So, for me and Scott, I'm going to talk on behalf of both of us just for a second. This movie looks like it sucks, man. Like, this this looks horrible. And I'm really <laughs> so, upset about here, it. <laughs> let, let's, let's, let's really dig into this for a minute. So, I, I've been really, really excited about this movie. I've been really excited about the casting. And as I'm seeing more and more trailers, I'm v- getting very, very nervous. Yes. Because... There was so much negative criticism from um, some of the older generation, some of the uh, uh, more gun-toting generation, uh, whatever, that there was issues with the casting of Ariel (laughs) being uh, an uh, African-American actress. And so now I'm very hesitant to Mm -hmm. give my opinion of what I think this movie is going to be. For for me, I, I was so excited with the casting, and and we'll sure. get into a little bit more about why I was excited, and 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 we'll get Nick's way in on this. But as I'm seeing these trailers, and I'm seeing how bad the CGI looks, I'm hoping maybe they just didn't get it done in time for the trailers, and it'll be different CGI for the movie, like kind of like what happened with Sonic uh, when <laughs> when Sonic came out and looked terrible, and and people revolted and they redid it. But this movie does not look good. And and again, it's not from the talent of the voice. It just looks 
like really, really bad CGI, like worse than She Hulk. It, it's for me, it's not even the CGI. It's the fact that uh, part of what makes Disney Disney is the humanization of animals, right? I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. And they're taking that away in this movie. Like you're looking at a literal crab as Sebastian, which is not charming. It's delicious. <laughs> like there's no, there's nothing about Sebastian. That's like making me want to sing. It's just giving me an appetite. They had the same problem with Lion King where you can't, <laughs> you can't have emotion on an actual animal. So when Mufasa dies, spoiler alert, <laughs> Uh, Simba runs down. He's like, dad, dad, wake up, dad, dad. And it's like, although he's not talking like that, his face shows that he doesn't even care because he's a, he's a, he's a lion and lions don't give a shit. Like just, if you look at a lion, they don't look sad. They don't look happy. They just look like a lion. They just have one look like, um, Zoolander. <laughs> exactly. It's just one look. And, Little Burbaid is giving me those kind of vibes, not with Ariel, but with Scuttle. Flounder is a thing. Scuttle out of looks nightmares. terrible. Sc Flounder, uh, terrifying. Mm -hmm. Terrifying. Like they kind of put a little bit of weight on Flounder. <laughs> a at least a little bit because <laughs> right? he's, he's like, around. He's just like this, I know, and he's like this little slim little eel. Uh, speaking about the eels, holy shit, nightmare fuel. Um. And and I'm I'm not talking about the eels. I'm talking about Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Melissa McCarthy, so that does nothing for me. she does nothing for me as Ursula. I think she's going to play a good Ursula though, because I think she plays that role in every every uh, role that she plays. Um, not a big Melissa McCarthy fan, but I'm an even lesser fan of just the dehumanization of these animals. Man, it's like I was really excited for the under the sea um song in this movie now i'm terrified like i feel like i will never swim in an ocean again after watching this movie <laughs> and, until you're crazy in september <laughs> until my cruise <laughs> after, you're going to alaska so i guess it's cold but I'm, we'll that, that, going to alaska alaska was a result of the trailer <laughs> from little mermaid it's like skipping the caribbean this year <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, mean, I, Scott, Nick, I agree. What do you think about the CGI and the animals and this stuff? And then we'll talk about the deeper, yeah. <laughs> deeper meanings to this. I mean, just looking at it, yeah, I, I agree with the whole animals, animals with just the way they look and talk. It's just odd to see a fish talking. Yeah, or, or right, a crab, right. <laughs> a crab dancing. Yeah, a, Jama <laughs> a Jamaican crab, I guess, but a Jamaican yeah. crab at that. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I give you that. It, it looks a little weird. I haven't paid too much attention more to the CGI um, in the commercials, more so just looking at the beauty that is that movie and the story behind it. And that's what I love sure. about The Little Mermaid. So. Now, Little Mermaid is one of my favorite movies. And I'd be lying if I didn't, if I said that I wouldn't be going to see this opening weekend because I will be there. I will be one of the people paying Disney money for another remake. Uh, I will see every remake. <laughs> I will see every single I, one. I won't, ne I won't necessarily be there opening weekend, but I will see it in in theaters. One, I have a really nice theater, uh, and I love to go to movies there. But I do want to see this. I'm a, I'm a musical buff. I love mm -hmm. I love the music of the Little Mermaid. Yeah. So I think like it, there's going to be some aspects of it that are going to be really good. And who knows, maybe we walk away from it going, oh, you know what? That was really good. I was able to look past the CGI. Like She-Hulk. She-Hulk was such a fun show sure. that we looked past how bad the CGI was. But it was, you know, we were a little bit forgiving. But we know what's going to happen. It's not an original. <laughs> it's not an original <laughs> movie. Like, we know what's going to happen. True. Like, that was like with Lion King, I saw the cast. Like, oh, my gosh. We got uh, Childish Gambino. We got Beyonce. We got uh, Seth Rogen. And I walked away from that movie. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't think we finished this watching was, that one. It was just, it, that, it was rough. Right? And it's like, how could Disney take a movie and remake the uh, uh, an amazing movie and make it worse? Yeah. Uh, you take out all the charming aspects of it. That's what you do. And that's what I'm afraid about in Little Mermaid. And also, they took out Poor Unfortunate Souls. We didn't even, not, I mean, sorry. I hope they no, keep it's that in there. In. They, they <laughs> took out, they, no, they, they took out, they took out Be Prepared from Lion King. 
Sorry, I got the villain songs mixed up. They, oh, that song is garbage yeah. anyway. Oh, Scott, get the it, that hell song out of is, here. Scott, it's pro- get the hell out of here. That's probably the most, that's probably the most oh skipped my, Disney song oh on any album gosh. ever. Ryan's going to drop his Patreon membership <laughs> after, after hearing that. Yeah, it's like watching like so, Beat in the Beast live action was phenomenal. Like, I, I mean, hundred oh, percent. Obviously, those weren't animals. I guess it was right. a lamp and <laughs> or a candlestick, but <laughs> which a is clock. weird as it is. Yeah, yeah. which is weird. But yeah. the way they made it, just it looks that made it look more lifelike, but not too realistic. I guess too. I agree. Yeah, so I agree with you. I feel on like that. I feel like with Little Mermaid, yeah, I, I see it's like the fish. It looks like a real fish. <laughs> yeah. Which shouldn't be talking unless I'm right. s- unless I'm super high. <laughs> 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 Which actually, maybe I'll, I'll I'll pop an edible before I go. That might be the solution to this movie. <laughs> I was just gonna say maybe that's yeah. the key. Maybe Disney is trying to legalize you know because Disney's gone all liberal. Maybe they're trying to legalize marijuana yeah. for recreational use, and this is their. I started to watching wow. old Disney cartoons while get, having an edible on me, and it's very fascinating to watch them and look at like hunchback notre dame and i'm like there was this statue that in real life if this was a real life like it's a statue but it was talking but the statue also didn't have legs i'm very confused at how it got around (laughs) um so i highly recommend watching (laughs) disney movies (laughs) you start thinking of the backs are like how did this statue get here (laughs) so i guess it's given that realization now of like oh it does have a backstory so I guess I guess if you hate Little Mermaid when it comes out next week, um, eat an edible and try to get yeah. racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that that brings us to our next point, Scott. Is uh, I have to disclose the reasons why I don't think I'm gonna like this movie because I don't want to get pinned as a racist because. I, like I said, I think the only thing besides John Stamos that this movie got right was the casting of Ariel. Listen, a mermaid is a mythical being. And if a mythical being has to be a certain color, go fuck yourself. Like seriously, (laughs) it really really comes down to that. Like you can't like, you can't have a black mermaid. Like how horrible of a human being do you have to be to be like, Oh no, that's where I draw the line. Black (laughs) mermaids. Like, are you serious? If that mermaid was purple, I'm sure you wouldn't bat an eye. But yeah, but but since but that since this mermaid is an African American individual, oh my goodness gracious! Now, that's just my opinion, and it's the right opinion. But that's just my opinion. Now, Nick, <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it is the right. I'm sorry, but because I really want to get to to, to Nick's thoughts on this. But yeah, it, you're you are right. I mean, like how and and what's sad about us expressing our opinions of what we think this movie is going to be is that we have to ex- give the disclaimer of th- why mm. we think it's going to be like that because there was so much just nonsense when the casting was announced and it's just like you know when are we going to get to a point where just people are people it doesn't matter <laughs> what color your skin is what your sexual uh, orientation is it, you know what really who cares like we're all people and and i i just i I hope that we can get to the the day when we all look at each other the same way and not, you know, Oh, a black person or, you know, Asian, whatever. It's, it's all bullshit. And, uh, and it's sad that I have to preface why I think this movie's going to be garbage <laughs> so that I'm not pinned as a racist. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. Pin it. Just, Pin it on the fact that I live in a gated community with two washers and dryers. <laughs> that I'm okay with, but not my opinions on Just this. Tell movie. people that you are colorblind and you didn't even notice anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. We we have an interesting comment in chat right now. Uh, we are streaming on Twitch for whoever's listening to this. You can watch this show live on Twitch at nine thirty ish on Wednesdays. Um, look at the decoy writes. It actually makes more sense to have a black mermaid. So I, I wrote to him like, why, you know, why is this? I'd love to share this. Uh, fish get their coloring from what they see. So if they see dark, they turn dark. So realistically, the original Ariel, it's racist for having her being a white person. <laughs> so screw you, Hans Christian Andersen. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Christian Andersen was a racist. I think, I think that's really what we... Uh, d- you know, assuming that he wrote this tale because he wrote every other one. Um, 
you know, I hope that you hear this in the afterlife, Hans. And I hope this hurts. So anyway, Ariel being black, obviously a unfortunate controversy in Fox News. But for <laughs> for you, Nick, <laughs> for you, Nick, you have an African American daughter. Mm-hmm. How does this basically do the exact opposite from what these racists are trying to perpetrate? Um, I, it's like you can look at it a few different ways. Like, obviously, I want to see movies progress and just show every diversity and all that inclusion and everything. So I love that Disney's doing that. But when Piper first saw the preview for this, she did not even mention one thing about her color, anything, her being different. She's like, that's Ariel. And for her, awesome. for her, it's like she sees the music, she sees the characters, she sees that as a story. And that's what it is. It's a story being retold in a different setting. So I don't understand why people are upset with who got cast. Maybe... Maybe it shouldn't have been Melissa McCarthy. Maybe it should have been Queen Latifah. I know people were wanting somebody like her to be. Mm, she would have killed it as Ursula. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's casting. They did it to what? Uh, and Terry Crews as uh, King Triton. Oh. Like, come yeah, on. Like, we had a lot of fan, just fandom before, like, when it got announced. We're like, oh, who's going to be Ursula and who's going to be King Triton? So, I mean, I would have loved to see, like, Chain and Tatum or somebody more ripped, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, a really cool story, which we shared on the Diz his podcast this week was, um, Alex, my co-host took his children to Disney world this week and they did a meet and greet with Ariel and his daughter went up to Ariel and said, why do you look different than the real Ariel? And, um, and, and of course she had a quick witted response she said oh it's the lighting in here right but how damn cool is that that you see this stereotypical i guess you would say ariel white skin red hair and uh and and this child thinks oh this isn't the real ariel Mm -hmm. the real ariel is an african-american uh mermaid uh i just thought that was so cool to hear and the fact that she even brought it up was was uh was, was pretty neat um I have a huge problem with people that have problems with <laughs> castings in, of mythical creatures or of fictional creatures that are that may look different than what the original story was. Because if if you have the imagination to put a fin on a human being and call them a mermaid, who gives a shit of what color they are? I wait, I understand wait, the mermaids concept. aren't real. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> well, next episode, if you tune in, we'll break that down uh, on Chris's Conspiracy Corner. Uh, but, but like, uh, with, with historical figures, I, I can see that to an extent. Like, I don't want to cast, for example, Channing Tatum as Martin Luther King in a Martin Luther King biopic, right? But, like, that, it, when, when you're casting someone that's made up as somebody else, like, you're not, there, there's no depiction of anybody. So why do you have a problem with any actor or actress being filling that role? Like, well, it's like, and there's been so many remakes too. Because it's like, look at Cinderella. We had, um, oh, it's Cinderella, the the Wiz. Yeah, no, no, uh, Cinderella. And Cinderella, yeah, Cinderella yeah, we had Brand- C- Cinderella, Cinderella, Brandy, yeah, Brandy. With that, Bra- and we had the, Whitney yeah. Houston and Brandy. Yep. So it's like you get you get all these different remakes out there, and yeah, they might have been in different studios, so they're telling their version of it. So yeah, this is Disney, but it's also a completely different version. It's not the cartoon. Right. If they're remaking yeah. the cartoon, maybe they do different animation, but I don't see them changing that character in a sense. So, Yeah. It's, it's like, um, for my wife, Cinderella was Brandy. Brandy is Cinderella. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell she, her she it. anybody else. Oh my gosh. And I didn't even know that existed until I, until we started dating and we actually saw the musical, um, when it came to Philly. And first of all, Way better than the Disney version. Well, it's just uh, more, definitely better music. Way more, <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> way better, way, yeah. way better music. Way better, music. more updated music. But yeah, but but like I'll tell you what, that that actress could have been Indian. That actress could have been Chinese. That actress could have been whatever. I like the music. I don't. I don't care. I don't care what they yeah, look like. The music, and the stories, just, like oh my god, that's what you're in the movie for. Um, 
this this young woman who's playing Ariel in this movie. Um, I, I don't want to mispronounce her name because I always call her Holly Berry. It's Haley Berry, right? Haley, ba- it's Haley Bailey. Haley Bailey, yeah. very very hard. Very like that. She should change her name. Not Halle Berry. It's Haley ha- Bailey. Haley Bailey. Haley ba- that's very confusing. <laughs> right. Like, please, like, if there was anything, Halle, Halle Bailey, Halle, Halle Bailey, Halle Bailey. Like, if there's anything, <laughs> if there's any criticism I have on her as an actress, it's just change your damn name. Like, that's way too close to another famous actress. Too similar to yeah, Halle Berry. Way too, yeah. Like, just change. Well, it and to it's the, just to, a tough to, name to, to pronounce in general. <laughs> that's a lot yeah. of a lot of L's going on. Yeah, um, Betty White just died, so there was an opening for Betty. So you can be a Betty, <laughs> um, Blanche, her you know character from Golden Girls. You can be a Blanche, <laughs> but but Halle Ballet, mm, I don't know. Sounds way too close to Catwoman. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, she's been out of the spotlight for long enough. I feel like you could take her name, right? No, Michelle Pfeiffer is Catwoman. No, Halle ba- Holly Berry was Catwoman. No, Michelle Pfeiffer was. Catwoman in Michael Keaton's Batman. In the movie Catwoman, Holly Bear was Catwoman. And you could not tell me otherwise. Oh, that's not a real movie. <laughs> not a real movie. Please don't. No, no. Yeah, she was Catwoman, 2004. It's like, I, was, I just read this this morning. Like, this is, there's no way I forgot that fast. Was that when you were born? Um, <laughs> shortly after. I, was, uh, I had Catwoman t shirts and stuff with Holly Bear on. It's probably why I remember. But. Um, if you have an issue with um, Halle Belay being Ariel, I guess what I'm trying to say is just unsubscribe. Say that little. There's, it's very easy to do. Just go to our podcast. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> every week, every week, you're telling more and more people to unsubscribe. <laughs> Unlike Scott, hey, we, listen, we can't, we can't have listeners that all have the same opinion that we do because then there's no thought. Uh, it's, we're just speaking to the choir. Yeah, you know what? That's true. What 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 I heard Scott say right there is, there's very fine people on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> very fine people on both sides. <laughs> On that note, you are listening to the New Friends Podcast. We will be right back. There are three things that I hate in life. Taxes, nausea, and booking vacations. The first two I'm stuck with, but for the third, I use Sandpiper Vacations. Sandpiper Vacations is a small business that is LGBTQ plus owned and operated with travel advisors all over the country. Whether it's a cruise, a trip to a theme park, or an all-inclusive resort, Sandpiper has you covered. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's free. Why book a vacation when you can have someone else do it for you? That's like choosing to take the stairs in a building that has an elevator. Leave the headaches of booking a vacation to someone else. Get your quote today at www.sandpipervacations.com and tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Hey everybody, it's Scott from the No New Friends podcast. If you'd like to hear all of our episodes, all of our past episodes, just visit our website, nonewfriendspodcast.com. All of our links to all of our old episodes are there. If you didn't understand an inside joke or just wanted to re-listen to something, just check it out. It's nonewfriendspodcast.com or you can check us out on all streaming platforms. Welcome back to No New Friends After Dark. And when I say welcome back, I mean, thank you for continuing to listen. Because you're not, I'm not welcoming you back from anything other than this podcast. You didn't change the channel because it's not a damn radio station. I Stop me from saying welcome maybe, back. Maybe they paused it to, to start their work day. Maybe they were listening oh, to it on their 20 minute gosh, drive to work. You're right, I'm very insensitive. And they stopped and went to work. Maybe they yeah, had to stop Because you don't maybe know they had what to stop work Oh, Maybe yeah. Actually, I I are the best. I I listen on pooping. Yeah, poop podcasts. Well, maybe are the best. Maybe they stopped pooping and had to pause it, and then they're now resuming after uh, maybe on the next poop. You know what? And now, first, you gained my interest. Now you've gained my curiosity. (laughs) So please email us at no new friends podcast at yahoo.com and tell us. Where the hell are you listening to this to? If you're driving a car, please pull over first, but let us know. Pull over and, and email us. Listen, I'm on my commute ride home. Today was a really bad day. I was just fired. 
I was just, uh, you know, told on by HR from saying something crazy to a coworker. I don't care. Just tell me. I want to live a little through you guys. I don't work. Please let me know what it's like to have a job. Anyway, perfect segue from that to this. <laughs> My wife's a teacher, <laughs> and um, she does not listen to this at work, but she does listen to it on the way home. Uh, speaking about teaching, I don't have a kid yet against the... Um, the wants and needs of my wife. Uh, but Scott, you have kids. And Nick, you have kids. I do. We're getting near the end of the school year. We are going towards a transition period. And I know that kids are a lot different than spouses. But my wife's a mess right now because she's going to miss her kids next year. It's, a, it's, it's like a one-year foster type experience, if you will. I mean, that those are her kids. Well, she also gets know? a three-month vacation, though. She does get a three month vacation, but not from me. So is it really a vacation? <laughs> I don't know. That's up. Uh, that's up to her. And if you have a three month vacation uh, and you want to go somewhere, yeah. contact Nick at Sandpiper Vacations. Tell them that the No New Friends podcast that you, which she has, um, vicariously through me. I contacted Nick because we're going on a great vacation. Like I said on the pre- previous episode show, uh, we're going to Alaska. Booked through Nick. Thank goodness, because uh, if I didn't book through Nick, we wouldn't be going on vacation. So happy wife, happy life. Thank you, Nick. So anyway, you guys have kids. Like I said, what is this? Because I want to know, what is this end of the year process like? Are your children getting a little bit nervous for the next grade? Are they getting sad that they're going to, you know, leave their friends, their teacher? What is is this like? Please inform me. So, Piper is five and a half. She's just finishing pre-K. So, she's been in preschool. She was in a wee school before that. So, this is the end of her time at daycare and um, pre-K. And she starts kindergarten in the fall. Um, She's very sad that she's going to be leaving her friends um, since she's she's been there since she was four months old. So, we'll still still drop her in for daycare every now and then. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, so she's, she's got her little clique. And we had... Parent teacher conference today for oh for pre-K. what was that like? Uh-oh. Um, so they ba- <laughs> I'm curious. So, so they basically gave us like a little folder of some like kind of testing type stuff they've done of like her cutting different lines and different shapes and um, pointing to different um, shapes as well too and saying like what mm-hmm. shapes they are and telling us like where she is and how well she's doing with knowing her shapes, her numbers, and her letters. Um, she got four letters right on the alphabet, so I'm pretty proud because we started with zero. <laughs> <laughs> hey, proud dad moment. That's that's good in my book. Um, a couple of the letters apparently were numbers. Um, <laughs> I also found out that I think my daughter might be a um, leader of a gang. Oh, so please elaborate. So she has these two friends in class. Um, uh-huh. I'm not going to say their names. But she calls them her sisters, and okay. each day, each day, the sisters fight over who's the favorite of Piper's. <laughs> <laughs> that so, I feel like that's every guy's dream. I, I, actually. Yeah, so, so she, apparently she yeah, apparently she's just leading them around the classroom and <laughs> being the leader, I guess, and they just kind of follow along. <laughs> Piper is, has made a cult. We're going to have to actually reach out to Piper for marketing tips yeah. for the No New Friends podcast. Uh, we're looking to develop a, a very similar structure of um, a following, I guess you would say. Um, now, Nick, you said she graded, you know, she scored this and that and this and that. What did she score in SAS? Um, very extremely high. <laughs> Which I'm sure you're very proud yes, of. Yes, yes. We're... Yes, <laughs> very happy with her. Starts but at home. yeah, it's like it starts at home. She said that she kind of came out of her shell. She started out the school year very shy, and now she just is the one that won't shut up in class. So, anytime they go around the room, they just kind of say like what their favorite thing is, and she has to tell a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> that makes like no sense. Or as Sean says, Piper- she's kind of like the Rizzo of Pink Ladies. <laughs> Piper to me is going to be uh, just from the videos I see on Facebook is uh, going to be one of the most popular kids in school, probably like the star athlete too. I saw her like a do a, a, a flip off a thirty foot uh, yeah thing into a foam pit. Yeah, like I can't, she's, I, I, she's had no fears. She's, she's about nine months old, I think. The first time she 
she started walking and she climbed up a ladder. Oh my god. And I so I had a ladder in the garage and I turn around and she's at the top and what do I do? I grab my camera, <laughs> take a picture. <laughs> and then I take her down. To go and terrified. Whoa, oh my gosh, hold that pose. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hold that pose. <laughs> Don't fall. Uh, but I mean, she's she's never been scared. She, and when she fell as a baby, she never got up and like cried really. We just kind of kind of taught her a little bit too to laugh about it and laugh it off. And I think that's helped build her confidence. And you see it like in gymnastics class, she's in a tumbling class now. She's the youngest one in her tumbling class because she is so advanced with it. It's, oh, it's amazing. She's amazing. And I'll tell you what, Nick, uh, I'm, I'm taking notes here. I, I kid you not, I'm taking notes, mental notes, because I can't write. I'm illiterate. But when you say that Piper, you teach Piper to be fearless, you teach her to be, uh, just laugh things off. Like, we got to start doing that, man. Oh my gosh. These little kids, I, I'm, I'm, I, listen, I'm taking notes all throughout the years and, and, these kids are falling and they're not even like getting a little bump or bruise and they're crying for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Like that's not my kid. Mm-hmm. I laugh about that. You're not hurt. You're not hurt. This is, they, 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 uh, you know what they did? They saw too many of those law commercials. This is America. They had law commercials, every other thing. And they see those law commercials. They want to get paid. These kids, these little babies want to get paid. And my kid's going to learn to work for a living. And Piper's going to be a, Piper's going to be one of those people. that's going to work. Piper's going to be the one of those. She, lawyers, she, I, think. I mean, she's already working. She's uh, every time we go on a, a work trip. Now I'm going to call them work trips, not vacations. Um, <laughs> for, right off for, purposes, for tax for purposes, purposes. <laughs> you get it um every time we go like I'll go, we go to a new resort i always do a room tour so i'll take videos and pictures around the room and like showcase what's available in the room because people like to see if there's outlets or if there's usb chargers and so we did one one time on um at disney world and i did my tour and then piper likes to do her own little one so i'll follow her around the room and she was, still couldn't talk fully um, she's like, oh, I'm going to show you the bathroom. So she walks in the bathroom, drops her pants as I'm live streaming <laughs> and sits on the toilet. <laughs> so see, she just knows it's going to attract. Yeah, like, she's like, like she's got the marketing. Scare, down for like, us. <laughs> yeah. See, like, uh, like shocking things create content. Yeah. She just knows, listen, I'm going to take a poop right here. And this is going to create content because you're going to be the uh, travel agent whose daughter took a poop on live stream. She she just she just knows the biz. That's great. <laughs> you're, you're you're bringing her up well. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see what she does a year from now, let alone you know a day or a month from now. Yeah, she's, she's, she's just she starts awesome kindergarten in the fall. Kid. She's like I said, she's not excited about it. She doesn't want to ride the bus. She told me the one day. She, oh man, her reason yeah, she, her reason she didn't want to ride the bus is because it's yellow and she doesn't like the color yellow. <laughs> but mind you, she was all as she stopped. <laughs> tell, tell, tell me, tell me your parents are not a gay couple without telling me that your parents are a gay couple. <laughs> <That's so joking. laughs> but it's like it's so funny because I looked at her and I'm like, I was like, well, I thought yellow is your favorite, one of your favorite colors because you're wearing a yellow shirt right now. And she was wearing this <laughs> bell Beauty and the Beast bell shirt, this yellow. She's like, no, it's not. There's black on it. <laughs> <laughs> So like oh she she knows how to weasel God. her way out of like a conversation and try to twist it. So yeah, we're in trouble. No, oh, you've taught her well. Yeah, you've taught you you you've created a monster in the best way possible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kindergarten, and she's already doing this. Now, Scott, did did you have any like worries about? Oh, man, it's going to be very different because listen, you got a same sex couple raising a little girl, which is. Basically, basically like playing baseball on steroids. Like they're just raising this. They're raising. They're raising their child in the best way possible. Scott, how is it like raising your daughter? <laughs> so it, you know, it's interesting and uh, it, it definitely a, a much different story than what Nick just told. So my daughter lives with her mom during the week and then is with us on the weekend, uh, and then. Summer becomes harder because now there's no school, and so we have to figure out all that. Mm. But start, you know, she she's she's ending fifth grade this year. She starts sixth grade next year, so she's going to be going to a new school. And we decided that she's going to come live with us. So this is like this huge transition Ooh, they, that we're about to you face. and you and Nick are going through very similar things, but Nick with her with the transition from preschool to kindergarten, correct? Preschool to kindergarten, yep. yeah. 
And then now you from actually having to do stuff. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm actually going to have to parent. Yeah. Uh, you know, more more days out of the week and not wow. just take her to, you know, Disney or Universal right, every weekend. Right. You're not going to be the cool dad anymore. You're just going to be the dad. Right. Yeah, you're right. Dad. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Every day, full time yeah. job. Yep. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to it because I, I miss sure. the hell out of her when she's not here. So I'm looking forward to her being here full time. And, you know, she's got friends. She's got really good friends in this neighborhood. You know, they've got their little sleepover gang mm-hmm. and all that. So I'm really excited for her to really be able to spend more time with her friends and, and not just the weekends and, you know, kind of have a little bit of a normal situation ish. Sure. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's nerve wracking too, because, you know, I don't work a traditional Monday through Friday nine to five job. Um, Chris job is one of those things that we do. Uh, Thank you. Still taking week. notes. Thank <laughs> you. This is very, I appreciate this. Uh, so I don't have that traditional Monday through Friday. So, you know, a lot of this is going to fall on my wife who is a bonus mom. You know, yeah, she's not right. She's not the biological mom. She's a bonus mom. So it's 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 a dynamic that we're going to have to figure out because we've never really be, we haven't. I'm sorry, we haven't been in this since since Dar- Darren moved out. Right, right. Because you know Darren Darren lived with us through through high school and whatnot. So it's refiguring that stuff out. So we had a very interesting dynamic because we have uh, Nick's daughter going to it. You know, transition to school. We have your daughter transitioning towards you. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. So you said that she has this little sleepover gang. Maybe you're going to have to get her in touch with Harper because Harper is the leader of a gang. Uh, Harper. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Piper. Oh my goodness gracious. That's right. You have to get her in touch with, with Piper because Piper is the leader of a gang, and um, you're going to have to figure out how your daughter can contact Nick's daughter so she can become. Uh, a leader to figure out which friends are going to fight over her on a <laughs> daily basis. Right. You got yeah, to have these right. neighborhood sleepovers turn into like these neighborhood, just little tussles and fights. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Yes, I agree. You're listening to now. <laughs> oh, <kidding. laughs> so, <laughs> Life well, comes at you fast. It's been a long day. <laughs> it, it's been a very long day. If I could tell, if I told you what happened today um, in my life, you would have thought it was a week. And if you would have asked Nick what happened today, you would have thought it happened in a week. And, and I'm sure what happened with Scott today uh, probably wasn't too bad. But <laughs> no, probably wasn't. no, probably wasn't. Scott was able to take a nap, and that's all you have to know uh, about that. <laughs> Uh, my mango tree in the back fell. See, so that was a little bit sad. And and Scott had to figure out um, which of his landscapers were on call today to be able to repair <laughs> that tree, which was very yeah, stressful. Well, they don't do that. So now I've got to hire someone to someone. Uh, I've got to hire a tree guy. So you know, I got to deal with that. And my daughter, my my oldest daughter's graduating high school this weekend. So you know, got all that going on. That's a that in itself is a big task, Scott graduation yeah. not only not not the fact that she's graduating but the fact that you have to go to graduation i feel like is a uh big task well, and we'll talk ab- we'll talk about that on uh the next episode episode 154 uh because there's a whole story behind what we're i mean it's a whole like we're leaving tomorrow graduation is not till friday oh it's in st augustine yeah see yeah, it's a whole Gra- thing. Yeah, we'll talk about that more next week, but graduation itself. I'm first of all, sorry for having to sit through that. I was just like, uh, luckily she goes to a small school, so it'll be It's fine. never too small mm-hmm. though. It's never small enough. <laughs> it's never small enough. <laughs> I think enough. our graduation was like 4 hours long. Which is, oh my god. Ugh. The uh and again, I don't want to talk about this too much now, but the worst part about graduations are the commencement speeches, speakers that you just don't care even the our guy our guy said the wrong freaking year i remember that's the only thing we (laughs) remembered about it is he said the wrong year and we're like "Uh." (laughs) i was at a graduation the other day and it was like the first mayor of a town that was like three towns over like why are you even here like there's just no reason (laughs) for you to be here and no no and they gave her an honorary um uh degree and then, which is a slap in the face for all the graduates. <laughs> but again, we'll, we'll talk about that more <laughs> next week. Uh, we have 
a little bit more in Scott's summaries and us wrapping up the episode when we get back. This is No New Friends After Dark. We will be right back. want to join a cult? Well, this might be your lucky day. For just $2 a month and a simple blood oath, you can join our clubhouse and become a friend with benefits. In addition to the amazing feeling of donating to the poor, you will have access to Patreon-exclusive content, live shows, and maybe even a behind-the-scenes look at my secret stash. To get started, head on over to nonewfriendspodcast.com and hit join our clubhouse. Can't wait to see you at the initiation ceremony. Oh, and in the chat during our live shows, of course. We are back with no new friends. After Dark. Hope you liked what you heard so far. If you don't, probably means you're a racist or a bad <laughs> parent. <laughs> um, this is turned into, quickly turned into my favorite part of the show. Scott Summaries. And it's mainly half and half. Half the reason I love this part is because I don't have to do any of the work for once. The other half is because it's hilarious. <laughs> so please, Scott. And actually, before we go into Scott's summaries, someone asked a very interesting question, Scott. For the episode that I host for my birthday episode, uh-huh. are you going to be doing Scott's summaries? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know we'll the answer see. to that. We'll see. It's tough for me to give up hosting on the Sunday episode. I know. So I've already like I said it, and then I was like, "Oh, I should." Yeah, I'm gonna tell you what I. But here we are. I've already. I've already. No, I'm gonna tell you what I. There's not even an ounce of me that wants to host the Sunday episode for my birthday. So (laughs) if you could just in the beginning of the episode, just be like, "Hey, happy birthday, Chris," and they just move on. That'd be totally. Maybe we'll just do that. That'd be totally fine by me. Add it in a post. (laughs) All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't even need it. <laughs> Maybe just add in a happy birthday song. I don't care. But if if it gets me out of hosting, then that would be that would be fine by me. So maybe that's what we'll yeah. do. Maybe that's what yeah. we'll do. So um you're welcome to everybody listening. I will not be hosting the Sunday episode. <laughs> um but without any further ado, Scott, do you have any summaries for us? I do. And uh I we should probably just change them from summaries to the roast of Chris. <laughs> uh <laughs> because that's pretty much even though I try, I try so hard to, to to put one out there for Nick, but there just wasn't anything tonight to uh, to. Poke Nick is at a for, Nick so. is a borderline perfect human being, <laughs> and it's very it's very it's yeah, very I would, hard. I would agree with that. It's very hard, and, and I don't think well, you yeah, just. It is, I just think you don't know around. me well enough yet. To, <laughs> I feel like you're too scared. <laughs> You don't have to be. No, not scared. Not scared, but it's just finding finding the things that are, are funny, that, that we'd be laughing with you, not at you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. With that, with that being said, uh, we were talking about the live action Little Mermaid. We talked a lot about that. And, uh, you know, Chris was, it, it said that the magical part of Disney is you know, dehumanizing, dehumanizing these, these animals into like these, these characters, these lovable characters. And uh, he said, you know, seeing Sebastian, the crab was just, it was ridiculous. In fact, it doesn't look like Sebastian, the crab. It doesn't uh, crab. It doesn't look cute. It just looks delicious. Let's be honest, Chris, your, your fat ass thinks everything looks delicious. <laughs> I'm so happy you didn't take that in another direction with dehumanizing of things and stuff like that <laughs> no i'm glad sarah's oh, yeah, not no, here the f- <laughs> <laughs> um we all agreed that flounder could have had a little bit of weight on him uh what nick was trying to say was just cast chris <laughs> just cast chris put some fins on it's all good chris said that obviously he and his wife do not have any kids Chris, I don't think this is as obvious as you think, considering it looks like you've already pumped out five kids oh yourself. Gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Did I lose the baby fat yet, or is that just a fat joke? 
<laughs> maybe I'm glowing, maybe. No, that's not a compliment. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Chris keeps talking about his trip to Alaska. <laughs> Um, Chris, you should be careful in Alaska. The Eskimos may hunt you down thinking that you're a walrus and they could feed you to the, your villagers for the next six months. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Chris said that Piper jumped off a 30 foot thing into a foam pit from 30 feet. Like that's pretty impressive. The problem is Chris is just so damn short that he, he thought it was a 30 foot jump. It was actually just a <laughs> step stool, Chris, just a small little step stool. <laughs> Chris said he's going to make sure to teach his kids to work. Uh, they're going to work. I guess the saying is right. Uh, those who can't do, teach. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that. I like that. I like that one. And finally, this is my favorite. I'm sorry in advance. Oh, <laughs> and finally, Chris said we should toughen up our, on our kids. Like, shake it off. This is the same guy that's been crying about a fucking house for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for whoever did you write this or did someone else write that one? I wrote that. One. I, I, I wrote. That one. I love you. Man, that was a good one. That was a good one. I, I, I actually, all, I wrote all of them except for the Eskimo one. Oh, I'm proud of you. That was a really good. Those are my summaries. Those are really good. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Scott. If you want to hear, um, <laughs> if you want to hear? I don't know why you would. But listen, if you want to hear more of any one of us, you can uh, <laughs> you can join our Patreon at NoNewFriendsPodcast.com. Join our clubhouse. Um, <laughs> you can watch our full show live. Now, of course, this show is, is streamed live every Wednesday at 930-ish. Um, you get to watch us all on Twitch. But our main show, the one that releases on Sunday, is No New Friends Podcast. We only stream the first segment. If you want to watch the rest of the unfilteredness that you see all show long when you're watching After Dark, join our Patreon. Uh, you will not regret it. The friendships that we've made, the laughter we've had is uh, some of the best ever. So, again, this has been No New Friends After Dark. See you next week. Well, I mean, that was different than what you just uh, did, well, but we'll that's see fine. Them. We're not going to see them next week, Scott. They're going to see us if they watch on Twitch, but they're not No, if you see. like what you heard, yeah. uh, we'll see. It. I don't <laughs> know. It doesn't matter. Just listen to us again. Just keep hitting play. Just don't unsubscribe. Yeah. It's literally going to download to your phone. Just listen to like, all there's, of them. There's, yeah, there's, like, there's literally nothing you have to do. Like, just don't do anything. If you like what you hear, don't do anything. We'll, we'll be right back <laughs> on your phone again next week. Same time, same place. On behalf of myself, Nick, and Scott, this is Chris. <laughs> Wait, I, I, I'm still, I still don't know the outro. Listen, we won't see you next week, but you'll hear us next week. Have a great week. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe I redo that? I don't know. Um, how, how many times can we say week in oh, one man. Okay, outro. so here's the, here's the real outro. This is why you don't drink on podcasts. <laughs> no, this is... It's, you haven't said that in a while. I'll tell you what. Nick, I'll tell you what. Um, this is just how bad I am at closing out a no, show. No, it's it's literally the the most difficult thing to do is the intro into the show and the outro. The, of the I, show. I, I would the rest of the show. Is I easy. would argue that the outro is is harder than <laughs> maybe even making a professional sports team. Like this is this is this is this is like it. Every week, I'm just like, what do I say? That's why, I like, on when I end the streams on the the actually the main show i just like do it as horribly as possible because i'm good at at ending horribly so um hmm, okay got it so that was a horrible ending just like james dean's life um oh god <laughs> oh man <laughs> if you really want to hear more of us we'll be back next week thank you guys it's been no new friends after dark No New Friends After Dark has been brought to you by Sandpiper Vacations. Sandpipervacations.com. Just check out our website, nonewfriendspodcast.com. Become a friend with benefits. Check out our sweet merch and so much more. This has been a No New Friends Entertainment LLC production. <laughs>